So again, good afternoon to good afternoon to everyone. Uh, uh, good evening as well. So we will continue our discussion on nursing informatics. As what I had mentioned, the the topics, the continuation of the topic last time, will be uh, have been uploaded as recorded uh, discussion uh, that you can access on week two. And the the initial topic of the the week two. Uh, uh, specifically on, on the topic for 2A had been uploaded also uh, on nursing informatics in the week two. So this is another topic that is related on the week. And we will cover also the topic for week three today so that we are attuned with, uh, with our timeline on the topics that are supposedly covered for the third week. Uh, actually, our discussion, our discussion will focus uh, basically on the theory and health informatics. Uh, the basic, the basic background of, of the theory is not new to you, since uh, eventually it was already uh, introduced to you in the foundations of uh, theoretical foundations of of nursing, and and uh, specifically, theory had been identified as. Uh, as a way of having assumptions, and this could set uh, a reference so that it may lead to a possible standards of, of practice. Just similar as what we studied about in the theoretical foundations of nursing, these are the basis and reference that, that our, our decisions and actions are based on the reference and principles of, of nursing. Now let us, let us continue because I have a background. Now, when it comes to the theory, when it comes to the theory, we have defined this as a collection of thoughts that represents reality. So, so this is this is somehow uh, this is somehow related on how for a while, just for a while. Anyway, okay, that's noted, Miss Pardilia. When it comes to when it comes to this perspective of the concept of theory, these are the definition as a collection of thoughts, a guess, or a lens on which we view the world. So, sir, the the definition is almost uh, uh, generic or generalized. So, we'll we'll proceed to uh, a more layman's uh, uh, discussion of it. So as what we have mentioned, we consider theory as making assumptions based from our observations, or this could be, this could be the thoughts that had been consolidated and created a one concept that is uh, acceptable as, as part of the practice or standards. Now, uh, why is it that we connect the theory to health informatics? Uh, this is connected simply because it will give it will uh, facilitate on the use of our analytical and critical thinking, because as we go through with uh, the informatics theory, theories are very important for us, wherein it get, it can give us an overview how it started, how it was conceptualized, how it is being still uh, embraced in our present times as a perspective or concept. Just like for the informatics theory, there are four areas that we have considered informatics theories as, as on the principle. Number one, we have communication. Okay, from the discussion of the information science and science itself is a systematic way or approach of processing and of information, communication is very important factor that is part of health informatics, simply because we have defined communication as exchange or sharing of information and ideas. And this may comprise either the receiver or the sender. From a typical example that a nurse is, is having her health education to a client, regardless if it is uh, on a face-to-face -face or physical or a remote uh, platform, then communication uh, is still considered on that uh, area simply because there's exchange of information from the questioning, then we have responses. So as long as you have the exchange of, of the, the responses and, and queries, these are considered as communication, which is a very typical 
of what is happening uh, in a doctor to client uh, relationship, to a nurse to a client relationship, and even with the healthcare team, with the doctor to nurse uh, interactions. Informatics theories also take into consideration the principle of change uh, because we all know that even during the, the times or as we track the history, this considers yung tinatawag natin transformation. Just like when we have heard about industrial revolution. So during the industrial revolution, it, it upgraded uh, some of our equipments, some of our machines for purposes of advancement, for purposes of convenience, and for, for purposes of high satisfaction of stakeholders. So just the same as for the change. The paradigm shift in nursing education is really unexpected due to pandemic. And the, the higher education institution explore on the how uh, the education could be uh, delivered through online. And we did not expect that we will come up with this scenario because we are uh, exposed and we're immersed to a traditional classroom setup. There in the, there's a teacher, student interaction, student to classmate interaction, and even student to other personnel interaction. But for now, we are using the, the various platforms as an adaptation to change because the change that we're talking about is the situation on when the time that the it was declared the community quarantine, the public health emergency, and the pandemic. So adjustment must be must be done for us to continue our, our systems in the society, so just like the education system. So similar with the, the hospital, the hospital have adapted also various platforms on how they can still connect with the clients or how the clients can still connect to the hospital. Uh, during the time, uh, hospital consultations are restricted uh, by clinics. They have hold uh, the schedule simply because of a face-to-face -face interaction. Uh, however, the hospital must still uh, know, have its operation uh, because it is expected that this is a 24-hour facility and may not refuse those uh, individuals who are in need for medical attention. But the difference is that of from pre-pandemic to the pandemic situation. During the pandemic situation, our concern is that of uh, this is, uh, we have, we are, we have encountered COVID-19 wherein we are hanging on some of the responses on how we will prevent it. We are, we are hung on the perspective of how we will treat individuals with this, uh, COVID-19 infection. So we really need to adapt change because it will need to protect also the, the nurses who are working in the hospital and at the same time to the clients. So this paradigm shift, this changes, are made possible with the institution not to compromise the quality, not to compromise the, the services are being offered by the hospital, but basically adapting, adapting and embracing change for the, the best uh, services that they could give in spite of those restrictions. When it comes to informatics, theory on systems. Information and we have technology. So technology are already available information are available but but how how it could process the this information when it comes to accessibility how the information will be accessed for uh, will be stored how it will be retrieved and how it will be protected so this seemingly will will give us the 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 picture wherein wherein the the individuals the professionals and even the the, the stakeholders who are and who are our clients may still consider that the fact that uh, systems are in place, but is it updated? Is it upgraded? Is it uh, it, 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 it conforms ba with the use of the technology? So the process could 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 be upgraded with the use of the various platforms and opening opening ourselves to this these platforms so that it could improve the what we call the systems and processing of information. Just like before, uh, I know I have witnessed the evolution of the mobile phones from the time that the, the version of the mobile phones uh, do not have cameras, uh, it, just can, it just can only send or, or receive uh, text messages. But for the, for the evolution of the mobile phones, uh, 
it added features wherein it could already take photos. Unlike before, we need a camera, a separate camera, a film to, to process the, the photos uh, and print photos as well. But for now, it's digitalized. We, we, we don't need any more high-end cameras because uh, high-end cameras are already installed in your own mobile phone. So it, it was already combined in one gadget. So these gadgets can still process information. First and foremost, uh, it can capture photo and it could be stored in your own mobile phones. Uh, informations now, unlike before, we need to have, we need to, to visit the computer shop and, and, and search or rather have our, our research through the search engine such as Google. But now we can, we can upload in our own uh, mobile phones wherein we can do uh, the searching of terms or, or basically information that we need through the search engines using mobile phones. So these are part of the system. Uh, before it, we do manual, manual filling up of forms. Ngayon we have the, uh, already the just like the MCU trace that you can just uh, enter your responses. Then using the QR code, then those information will be stored into the health services department for evaluation. So these are, these are the, the, the systems that we're talking about. And number four, information. Um, when it comes to the theory, how the, the inform, how the data has been related into information and how this information become a knowledge. So as we discuss the, the, theory, uh, and, uh, the theory and health informatics, this will give us the idea on how uh, it will further uh, uh, level up the, the concepts of data information knowledge because it may proceed to wisdom, it may proceed also to highest level of practice until the whole community will benefit. So next, uh, we have the first theory related to the clinical information system according to Blum in 1986. So it was defined uh, accordingly the three uh, important uh, uh, important uh, principles and concepts in informatics, the data, the information, and the knowledge. So when it comes to data, uh, as what I've told you, if, you if, if numbers, symbols, numbers, symbols, and terms are, are generic, it may not and do not have any meaning that is considered as data. Because uh, according to the clinical information system, whenever there is someone who is not uh, who cannot in interpret a specific symbol or term or numbers, there could be an analyst, an analyst that will give meaning, okay, that will give meaning on, on the data that is needed. So once the, the analyst uh, provided the, the data that is, uh, that is necessary for this situation, it will now uh, translate into the information as a set, set of data with meaning. Okay, with the set of data and set of data and meaning, we have the consideration that this information uh, can be translated into knowledge. How it could be translated into knowledge? This will uh, translate into knowledge whenever that this will be uh, used uh, by the person who have learned the basic uh, information, either in his practice or in her practice in nursing or either in his uh, or her daily chores. So this, uh, this direction of the, the processing of data into information and information that transform into knowledge is based from this clinical information system of Blum in 1986. Next, so we have the conceptual framework for the study of nursing uh, by Graves and Corcoran Perry in 1989. So three years after Three years after, the basic concept of data information and knowledge integrated the concept of management processing. If we say, if we say processing, there is a specific procedure or flow that it may follow through so that we could process data to information and information that will be transformed into knowledge. Because on the basic concept of management, we have the what we call P, O D C. What does P O D C means? P stands for planning or plan O organize the direct and C control. 
Okay? So, just like for these concepts of management, plan, organize, direct, and control. For example, data. The data, if, if, if you really need a data, you need to start with planning. How you will retrieve, how, you, how the data needed will be provided or be supplemented. So this could be, in, could be answered by a plan. What could be your objective? What could be your, 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 your goal of, of knowing the important or retrieving important data? Next, organize. Class, diba, once you gather data and information, you consolidate it. And consolid consolidation of this, uh, of this information as is related to organize. Now, once you have those information and you, you consolidated those information, then it follows through direct. The direct is how you will use this information. So you may have analysis on, the, on those available information. The next is after the, uh, the, 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 specific, the specific analysis on the direct, then control. Control is to evaluate those data ba or information that have been consolidated is relevant, meaningful, useful. So that's the time that the person will try, will will embrace it as will embrace it as a as a knowledge. Now, when when we when we talk about when we talk about this perspective, uh, it may consider on how the nurse will process this knowledge as wisdom. Class, always remember when when the knowledge turns into wisdom, the person. The person who's, who's, who's uh, aware of the knowledge can use it now and utilize it now for decision making. So once it will it will consider na po for decision making, then it is now uh, it is now uh, an important concern wherein this serve as your 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 power that you are knowledgeable and at the same time competent of doing it. So that's why it, 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 we did not include it here wisdom yet. Because it is on the level palang ng knowledge and the integration of management of plan, organize, direct, and control. Let's go deeper. We have the Nelson data to wisdom continuum. Okay, so the theory and health uh, informatics based from Nelson and Juice in 1989 of the same year uh, of the the theory that we have discussed on conceptual framework. It added, it added another hierarchy or level, which is wisdom. And it is now, it is now uh, integrated with the interrelationship. Now, in the data, for example, names, collect, organize, level of data, no meaning at all. So the next level is in, in information. When you interpret it now, and you have already the meaning that basically answers the five W's. The what, the when, the when, uh, uh, the what, the when, the where, the why, and the who. That is already information. Then this interpretation will, uh, this inter interpreted information may serve as your knowledge as based on the, the understanding that you have learned from it, that you're aware of it. So that's knowledge. And now wisdom comes in. So when you apply what you have learned as a knowledge to specific performance of procedure to your client, to your decision for your self-protection for health, that is already wisdom. So that is now the difference with, with the, the framework of theory that we have discussed in number two. But on the Nelson's data to wisdom continuum, it added the wisdom as to make to, to make it more relevant that the knowledge may not just only uh, may not just be only learned but this learned knowledge can be useful if you will apply it and that is on the level of wisdom okay next po the number four is on the informatics to improve health if you will notice it added again another hierarchy so we have data information knowledge wisdom and then we have practice and, and the, the, the desired outcome is healthier communities. If, if you will notice, this is not just only individualized, but this could also help uh, a group or a population group. So 
let's start with the data. So data, you could have uh, demographics, client problems, uh, what is the direction of, uh, of the needed data that you may have. So example, uh, in, in a community, the, there is an increase in the number of teenage pregnancy. If you can remember, if you can remember the, the discussion that we had when it comes to the fury and its connection with the informatics, so we can easily identify if it is data or, or information. If we have lots of questions to raise, then these are still considered data. But if we identify that it has already a meaning, that is considered as information. So that's why in data, it's client demographics. So data needed, age, the name, uh, age, name, uh, gender. So although within teenage pregnancy, uh, uh, we have involved the female uh, individuals. So yun yung tinatawag natin client demographics. So these are the data needed, but not yet supplemented with information. So client problems. So client problems could be identified as ano ba tong problems? Is it health problems? Is it more on comorbidity? Is it on high-risk pregnancy? Is it uh, uh, gestational hypertension? So there are still problems that may consider the high-risk uh, teenage pregnancy. So that is data because there are many questions that had been raised. So next po, when it comes to the information, this is the time that we are already provided. Yeah, we're already provided with the information. So if, for example, uh, what, does, what are those information that can be provided? We all know that uh, every services that you may have in a facility requires uh, finances. Okay. Usually the question is that of how much will, will, will it take if I will have dormant spontaneous vaginal delivery versus cesarean section delivery. So in this report, the information can, 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 can provide us uh, the reference by which, for example, uh, data, high-risk pregnancy, the level of priority is high because high-risk uh, pregnancy. So high priority siya, and that gives already information. So when, when it is given with the information, then the knowledge comes in that the, since it's high priority as, uh, as based from the information, then the, your knowledge is from the perspective of data of teenage pregnancy, second is high risk and it may need high pri it may require a high priority intervention. Then your knowledge as a nurse is you need to attend to, to this teenage pregnant with high risk condition because it may not just only affect the maternal health but also the well-being of the uh, possible newborn. So that is now the knowledge. Now, how wisdom comes in? The wisdom comes in, you're aware that and when, when you encounter high risk pregnant, uh, when you encounter teenage pregnancy, it is high risk and you need to have immediate intervention. Your wisdom is that of you will apply this uh, into decision making. So how how it may uh, how it may apply to decision making, I will continue as a nurse to monitor the the pregnant uh, the teenage pregnant who is already high risk. So what could be what could be my wisdom? To since high risk, I I will definitely consider measures for safety. So I will monitor the fetal heart tone. I will monitor also the paces of labor if the client do have the you are experiencing already the labor. So in labor, you need to, to take into consideration yung data. So you'll go back again to data. So ano yung, what are those data that you may need in the monitoring of patients who are in labor? So you need to, to check the frequency of the contraction. You need to check also the severity. You need also to check the effacement of cervical. Uh, so it, you need to check the cervical effacement. So what is important to us is when it becomes a wisdom, you need to monitor the basis of labor because anytime it may compromise any of the health of the mother or, or the fetus or the newborn. So in this situation, you need to, to monitor the vital signs of the mother at the same time of the baby. So that's already wisdom. You are already applying what you know based from your responsibilities and how it becomes a practice. So it becomes a practice. Come for example, you have, you have uh, uh, decided to, to monitor the vital signs of the client and what will be the practice. The practice that will come in as the use of the, the, the informatics or the information as, as has been processed through wisdom 
is it 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 lead, the high risk pregnancy have uh, have not contributed to maternal mortality rate so yung existence mo as a nurse have uh, applied in the practice so in that sense it has this healthier communities because uh, the, the pace of this use of informatics to improve health are very relevant because it may cause it may it may uh, disseminate basic information to those other uh, uh, pregnant uh, uh, pregnant women who are on the same or similar demographics with what I have mentioned. So, sir, uh, what you have set as an example is a typical is a typical situation from the teenage pregnancy up to the time that she have recovered and how the communities benefited from that uh, scenario. But how informatics comes in? Okay, the informatics will come in is from the time that you you need the data. Okay, you need the data, diba? Usually, you will ask of oh, have, have you regular do you have any do you have regular consultations where do you where do you visit uh, for consultation who is your attending obstetrician so on and so forth uh, situations may we may encounter problems with the situations is for example the the high risk teenage pregnant mother uh, was from Mindanao and just uh, recently uh, resided in Metro Manila. So how can you retrieve? How can you retrieve the, the needed data that you may have? For example, the, the, the pregnant mother uh, cannot, cannot uh, cooperate because of the pain that she is uh, experiencing, cannot uh, supplement the information that you may need. So what will be the alternative? The alternative is how you can access to the hospital where the patient uh, really had her uh, consultations during the, the all terms of her pregnancy. So there could be a portal that, that by which it, it, it is given uh, the possibility of access of that hospital where she had their consultation. So the obstetrician who, who is attending now to the client may have an access to the information that was stored in the hospital where she had her uh, consultation. So that is the use of the informatics. And from the information that will be provided uh, by the hospital through the remote portal platform or, or, or online platform, then this could be sufficient on how the, the, the obstetrician can manage and strategize uh, her uh, attention to the client who is now admitted in the hospital. So in this informatics, it may facilitate it may facilitate as a knowledge that the person is high risk based from the history and based from the access through the platform and how it becomes a wisdom. So for you to be more, uh, to be more, to, to validate the condition of the client. So again, using the platform, you can access the previous and or the recent diagnostic evaluation so that it will be compared to the present, uh, to the present uh, condition of the client. Now, how it becomes a practice, because at the time you are now attending to, to the client and using the, 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 the data that becomes information and your knowledge, the wisdom that you are no, using now is you are deciding on how to attend to a client who is high risk and to save and to have a safe delivery. And how it becomes a practice. The practice comes in that the, the pregnant mother uh, did not uh, experience the death and because you have access to the relevant information and how to have the healthier communities. So it may also prevent similar condition who have the same case in the community. So these are the pathway by which we have considered the theory and health informatics on how it is related to, to each other. So it's according to Bailinger. Okay, so this is the end of the first part of our discussion. Uh, the next part of, of our discussion will focus on the nursing informatics model. I know you can relate you can relate in the nursing informatics model simply because this concept will uh, introduce uh, some of the areas by which use of informatics even uh, in your mobile phones, use of uh, the technology uh, on the electronic health records, so let's see and have immer uh, and immerse ourselves on in this concept. But as a start, let's have the relationship of how nursing 
and knowledge are interrelated with each other. So I may I may give you uh, information when it comes to when it comes to this uh, perspective. And and in this in, in this situation and in this situation we have the number one knowledge workers. Okay. From this one, two, and three, we will differentiate workers from acquirers to users. Workers, uh, we are considered as knowledge workers because we can generate information. Kaya, di ba, we have been oriented on how you will translate data and process it to information. Then it becomes a wisdom. So, I uh, wisdom rather in a knowledge. So, it, ha it added pa to, to the hierarchy uh, such as wisdom and practice. So, a nurse can facilitate... Uh, can facilitate gathering of, of information or gathering of data and translate it into, info, into information. That's why uh, nurses are being oriented on how to do uh, interviews in patient history, how to uh, consider the subjective data and the objective data relevant for nursing care management. Another, uh, the nurse can complete, can definitely complete a nursing care plan using the process of the using the concept of data uh, information and knowledge to what extent for example so when when you do the care management to your client you need data such as the subjective and the objective data once you have completed this data then this serves already as your information the information for you on how you will formulate your nursing diagnosis and once you formulate the nursing diagnosis and it this will convert into the information once you specify it through smart specific uh, measurable attainable realistic and time bound in your planning and at the time that at the time that you have used this already uh, for the direction on your intervention that's already knowledge because what you have applied in the intervention are your uh, acquired knowledge from the the concepts that you have learned in nursing and the evaluation itself will give you a background for you to decide. So pag, if you will decide that you have not, if you have evaluated rather, that you have not met the, the goal of the nursing care plan, then what will you do? You will do revisions. And that revisions, the act itself is already at the level of wisdom. So that's the time that once you generate this data, information, knowledge, and considering wisdom, you are considered as workers. Ano naman sir yung acquirers? Kasi pag acquire, di ba? I acquire. Okay. Na capture, na store, yan acquire. So each each one of us can definitely learn from uh, a change in behavior is considered as learning because uh, it may it may reflect also to your actions. It may reflect also on on your experiences and decisions as well. Kaya ang acquirers po, for example, di ba? ang acquisition natin, skills, knowledge, and attitude. Why do we need to focus on the skills, knowledge, and attitude? Simply because these are very basic in the performance of responsibilities of a nurse because we are dealing with live people. We are definitely protecting people. So on, 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 this, on this perspective, the, the key term for the knowledge acquirers is efficient, capturing and storing knowledge even even with this session in, in nursing education you are listening to me you are attending online classes but not all 100% will be perceived in your subconscious mind probably even at the end of our discussion we can just only have you can just only remember 60% but but if you will watch this again this video uh, our discussion, it will help you or make you uh, uh, have full understanding of what uh, important, uh, no, what important uh, concerns may need for you to attend to problems of, of the client. Now, acquirers efficient. Kasi pag efficient, you will maximize the resources. Eh. So how you will capture, how you will store knowledge, where you can when where you can retrieve knowledge or information so ang, ang ang nurse we have the capacity on where where we could we could identify uh gathering of data and serve it as an information so if you will if you will ano, if you will connect it as workers workers we're aware of strategies and how to gather data and serve it as an information but how to 
to efficiently use this and capture this information to become a knowledge, then that's acquirer. How about users? If you find that each information that you have gathered are valuable, valuable that, that may benefit, that's the, the basic term, that will benefit individual or groups, that's users, okay? Knowledge users. Because you may, you may learn something you may learn something, but if you use this something that will benefit the knowledge, uh, that will benefit the individuals or groups when it comes to their health care, when it comes to optimum health, then that's knowledge users. So again, the summary view of number one, number two, and number three. As knowledge, as knowledge users, as knowledge users and uh, acquirers or users. As knowledge workers, the the, the key term here is you can generate information on data, uh, information, and knowledge. Acquirers is on how you are efficient, on how you maximize resources to capture and store knowledge. Uh, just a typical example also in a hospital setup. Example, you are attending to a client. Acquirers, paano papasok yung acquirers mo? You will, you will check the client's condition of what uh, specific management that the client may need. So what you will do, what you will do is definitely you will have the interview of the client. So just, it will come first yung knowledge workers, but it will become acquirer if you have used already this knowledge to already have a direction to manage the patient with his or her condition. Because it will, ano na eh, you will have the, the realization na, na this, this stored, kaya nga pag sinasabing stored knowledge, Stored knowledge, it's, it's in, in already in your mind and that is already, already in, in your mind that this could help. But once it helped, yeah, once it helped the client and, help, uh, you, and the client recovered from his condition and prevent complications, ah, you find it that what you did based from the information are valuable because it benefit or it benefited the individuals or, or groups. So these are the first this are these are these are the first uh, no first three okay first three next po is number four number five and uh, number five rather and number six is how knowledge how nurses are knowledge engineers knowledge managers knowledge developers or generators okay let's have one by one knowledge engineers okay when 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 we talk about engineers they are more detailed when it comes to planning right. Just like the same with us. We are not just only nurses, are not just only uh, satisfied with one objective data and one all, almost, uh, most of the time, we may have one subjective data, but for the objective data, we need to be more detailed so that it will be uh, in, in any way have the maximized the the, the data and information needed so that you will have a, a clear direction on your nursing care plan. So just like objective data, will you be satisfied that you do only have vital signs? Mm -mm. So other, other sources of information could be diagnostic examinations. Yeah. So if you think that this could be used, knowledge engineers, because you know that uh, this information can be used to design an effective nursing care plan. So what is the key term here? Designing and developing uh, knowledge. Next, managers. As managers naman, this, this is a combination, knowledge manager, this is a combination of knowledge acquirers and knowledge users. A combination. Why? Kasi uh, it, it, it is on the perspective that di ba, ang knowledge acquirers, this is the one that is, you have already captured Okay, you have already captured and you're aware of as a knowledge, then when, when you all have this knowledge, use it for the benefit of a population or group. Kasi kanina, when we talk about knowledge users, it could be either individual or group. But for knowledge managers, your acquired knowledge, your captured knowledge or stored knowledge will benefit the largest uh, population, the large population. So pwedeng community siya, pwedeng population group, it could be institutional, yeah, knowledge managers. So next po, knowledge developers. Knowledge developers, uh, this is different from knowledge engineers. Kasi pag knowledge engineers, 
you 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 take into consideration details. But if we are knowledge developers, we are using knowledge na it could be uh, it could be the reference for ano eh advancement. That's that's one thing that can be that can be used. Example, uh, you been you have been sent for a training, and I know that what you have learned from the training could be uh, echo to your colleagues, or possibly you can use it in your workplace. Once you have used it in your workplace, and and you think that what you have learned from the training can benefit and can innovate. Yeah, that's the specific term. Can innovate. The, the systems and the processes in your hospital, that's the term evolving. It evolves. That's why we use terms, uh, terms such as innovation, trends, updates. So this, this will, ano eh, this will uh, upgrade. This will improve. This will enhance skills when it comes to knowledge developers. So this will come to a point of realization that nurses are knowledge developers if they are innovative. So we have discussed all of these principles on the relationship of nursing and knowledge. Now we will proceed on the nursing informatics model. If you will notice, it is still part of the model. We have the data, the information, and knowledge. The one that has been that are being processed is data and information. It's the one being processed. And if the information leads to knowledge, it is transformed. Kasi class. It may depend on the person if the information that he acquired is acceptable to his standards and he may use it or she, so you, you may, he or she may use it as a reference. He has transformed because it's a change of behavior, what you have learned. So that's why class healthcare system. The healthcare system could be uh, aware naman tayo with universal healthcare. So ang universal healthcare is the health for all, meaning it could be on the barangay level, yeah, health for all for barangay level, for local government units, municipal level, provincial, then national, or possibly it could be on an international or global. This is what we have talked about healthcare system. Because nursing informatics uh, are very relevant when it comes to how you will see the picture of health conditions of people, how you will see the picture of, of patients who have afflicted with COVID-19. Not just only in the barangay level, but also international. So how this information are generated and how these agencies are giving us updated information. So that's why, for example, World Health Organization, usually with the report of the World Health Organization, cases, uh, active cases, deaths, uh, recoveries, countries, ang kanilang ano, report. Okay? So how, how the WHO... Uh, how the WHO generated this information and how it, how it is uh, how how it may have an implication yeah how it may have an implication on the on the health of the, these countries as it reached to the barangay level so for example world health organization you will see with other nearby countries that uh, there is a, a continuous increase of number of cases just like in hong kong Continuous increase in cases, and 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 the Philippines is just, ano, almost one hour to two hours flight away from from this country. And anytime any person who is have critical condition in Hong Kong and proceeds to us here in the Philippines, uh, it may spread the infection or the virus. Just similar with 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 the transportation, or rather the travel ban before. Why they have the travel ban before? Simply because they have received a report coming from these countries that it has high cases of, of this type of variant. Kaya nung lumabas yung uh, Delta, then it becomes Omicron variant, uh, variant rather, it already identified where what, what country have detected this uh, variant as well. So that's why napapalabas di ba ng mga nasa, nasa red list, nasa yellow, uh, orange, uh, yellow list, nasa green list. So meaning there are some uh, perspective that the decision may lead to a guideline or the implementation of a protocol for protection of the people or the Filipino people when it comes to health. So the nursing informatics encompasses various uh, areas, education. So 
our experiences now is a product of nursing informatics, the flexible learning system, the use of platform. Before you are used to the paper pencil examination, now you can have the, the online examinations. In the practice, naman, this is more relevant to the application of technology in your workplace. Uh, when it comes to research, okay, for research, what is the implication of this? The implication of, of research when it comes to the nursing informatics are how to uh, collect data, how this data translate into information for analysis, and how this analysis uh, uh, and recommendation may lead to dissemination of information when it comes to findings. So it, 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 it can generate the information using the technology. That's why even the Department of Health can, can have a 24-hour analytics on, on the one-week analysis of the uh, number of cases of COVID-19 from recoveries up to the death. So we could uh, realize the implication. So that's why these are the basis of the IATF for the, uh, their uh, declaration of alert level. So when we integrate nursing informatics, the three concepts that, uh, that we have mentioned that could be that is definitely part of nursing informatics, which you will uh, learn from the video that had been uploaded, the nursing informatics in the week two. It's all about computer science, information science, and nursing science. So the information science is how the information is being processed. The nursing science are the principles on the uh, how uh, nursing Okay, the profession itself is relevant on the processing of information and the computer itself. The computer uh, are the ones that can, oh, that can store, that can access, and that can protect uh, information. So these are, these are the, the situations and the areas that are part of the nursing informatics model. Actually, there are five key specialty areas and, and how... how how the five key specialty areas are being considered. We have clinical informatics. Class, if we say uh, clinical informatics, uh, yeah, later on, well, I have discussion on that. When we say clinical, it is more focused on individual, okay? Clinical informatics, just like for example, when a client is attending to a client, uh, when, a, when a, the nurse is attending to a client in the critical care unit, then use of the technology to access the vital signs, to monitor the vital signs, to refer the condition through a remote uh, facility. Uh, this is clinical informatics. If you're attending to a client using the technology. Consumer health informatics is more focused on the as a consumer. Eh? So consumer stakeholders. And our stakeholders are our clients. So we, we are talking about hospital operations. The clients are the one, well or sick, are, are considered as the consumer. So this will focus on the health education. So how they could access, how, how, how these people can access health information. So through the applications, right? The mga uh, platforms that the hospital may have. When it comes to number three, educational informatics, uh, the, the use of the technology, the use of nursing informatics in the, our curriculum. So that's why, sir, why, why is it that nursing informatics is, is a professional course? Because nowadays, uh, it is very important for us to take the, into consideration the use of technology because of some restrictions. And Seguro, this is not only because that we are experiencing pandemic, but, but possibly this could be an efficient way on how you will gather information so that it will be reported. Uh, it may have a timely report. It may have a real-time uh, interventions. So I think that's, that's the objective. So that's why when it comes to the uh, public health informatics, number four, of public health naman, we are focused on population. Okay, clinical focus on individual, consumer focus on the uh, clients, stakeholders, educational informatics, it may focus on, uh, it may focus specifically on the setup, kung ito ay uh, curriculum, uh, the higher education uh, institutions, public health informatics, the focus is more on population, and research in nursing informatics, the focus are agencies and nurses. 
So probably we'll start with with the, the basic discussion po of what is biomedical informatics. So I know you have heard about bioinformatics. Biomedical informatics is different from bioinformatics. Ang biomedical informatics, uh, it, this is a way on how to gather information through the use of methods, techniques, and theories. This is in general. So sir, ano yung pinag what is the difference with bioinformatics? Ang bioinformatics naman, ang focus nito is more on the the use of technology to to process data, information and knowledge on cellular and molecular level. If you go back to to the concept that we learned uh, during the time of the pathophysiology, di ba? we have the chemical level and the cellular level. So that's why if we say bioinformatics, the, the analysis is more on the cellular and the molecular level. So those are the details that they, they do uh, process. Just like for example, how bioinformatics is relevant in identifying the variant. So, diba? so how, can you, how can you detect that, that the variant uh, affected with COVID-19 is already in the country? So there is a cer certain use of technology that will uh, easily uh, identify uh, the type of variant uh, when the client had been diagnosed with COVID-19. So let's now proceed to health informatics. So as a health informatics, it is divided into clinical, public health informatics, and we have the consumer health informatics. Now, on this area, I have what, as what I've told you, clinical informatics are focused on individuals. Public health informatics are focused on populations. And consumer health informatics are focused on health information. So that's why if you will encounter these terms, just like, for example, if you have your RLE and you use the, you have used the, the cardiac monitor to retrieve information of pulse rate, cardiac rate, oxygen saturation, and ECG, ayan na, yung, yung cardiac rhythm, cardiac rhythm, clinical informatics. Yun. But if, for example, you, you gather, you, you use, uh, uh, we have 180 population in that barangay, then you have uh, you need uh, your your data needed is to know uh, to I track rather to trace those who are confirmed with COVID nineteen. So for those who are confirmed with COVID nineteen is one hundred twenty versus the one hundred eighty population. So very very high, di ba? Very high yung 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 case rate. So on that note, how the technology comes in. So from the use of any, any portal that the, the clients in the community, 180 clients will, will uh, respond. And that will, that will serve as a, no, that served already as a platform for you to know the status of the population. So 120 uh, over the 180 population are afflicted with COVID-19. So that's why do natin nalalaman kung may surge, do natin nalalaman kung uh, during be uh, before uh, uh, if, if the, the, the barangay will experience a lockdown, yon. So sa consumer or health informatics, we have the M-Health and we have the E-Health. Yung M-Health, any applications that are present in your, in your mobile phones. I, I know, for example, di ba, Sa mobile phones, it can measure how many steps do you have when you walk. Uh, it can also it can also identify if your weight, or your body mass index, if you are on the, the range of obese or underweight. So these are medical, these are M health or mobile health devices. But for hospital, for the hospital setup, we have the what we call e health. So ito naman yung e health. Ang ginagamit naman dito health tools. Yung health tools and services. Example, uh, hospital hospital information system. So sa hospital information system, from the time that the client has been admitted, from the client that had been uh, had been managed into the emergency room until uh, endorsed to ward, yung phase na tatlo na yon, admission, emergency room, and ward, can be information can be processed and stored already that these three areas can access all the information about the patient. So that is e-health. Kasi we have the what we call electronic health records. 
Okay. So before before we proceed, so I think uh, we may have uh, an earlier health break. So we may have the 15 minutes health break. You may uh, uh, hydrate yourself, stretch your extremities, uh, attend to your physiologic needs, and we will be back after 15 minutes. So I think uh, in 15 minutes by seven o'clock, we could already finish the discussion of the topic. Thank you very much and be back after 15 minutes.
Okay, so let us continue with our discussion. Uh, let us now proceed with the five key specialty areas. It was mentioned that when it comes to the clinical uh, clinical informatics, this are, this is definitely focused on individual. And just like for nurses, uh, if you will notice, in clinical informatics, the clinical care uh, is conceptualized for for the patient because the recipients of care are the patients. The health system is it. It, it, this will, uh, these are conceptualized uh, accordingly based from the setup or setting, if it is community or hospital based. The information technology is the available resources that are uh, being used by the institution. So that's why once we comprise these three components, it becomes clinical informatics, the use of information technology, the, the, the care directed to the care directed to the client, and with the situation or with the setup that the client uh, is present. Actually, when it comes to the clinical informatics, this is what we call informatics knowledge. So it, the background is that of, if we say it, clinical informatics, organizational skills and informatics knowledge. So what organizational skills were we are talking about? This is on how the nurse use the nursing process and how to use the technology and how to use the technology available uh, specifically in the uh, uh, specifically in the ano, in the system of the hospital uh, on the on the compliance of standards so just like when you are preparing for the for nursing care plan the nursing care plan is intended obviously for individualized care and and each uh, client have different needs so that's why any anything that is related to clients such as needs assessment yung, yung selection systems the system selection is related on the how wh what in, what processes are related to client uh, client care management actually the marketing education and implementation is more on the hospital uh, perspective but for clinical informatics anything that may benefit the the client using the, the, the technology now Let's now proceed naman on number two. Number two is consumer health informatics. In consumer health informatics, we are focused on health information. If you will notice, we have the healthcare process model and we have the patient work framework. If we have the, the uh, okay, if we have the healthcare the healthcare process model, the healthcare process model, the technology, the information technology are being used and the benefit also goes with health professionals. So that's why the healthcare process uh, modeling on the use of the informatics is the professional health information system. So it involves exchange of informations that are confined, confined rather with the health professionals. So since the health professionals are the ones who are attending to a consumer who are client, just like for example, uh, access of results of diagnostic examination of the client that is relevant for the prescription of medication. So who are involved in the prescription, the pharmacist, the doctor, the nurses is the one who's administering the medication. So I think that three professionals may have the access when it comes to electronic health records of the client. And the three professionals may have also an access with the clinical report forms wherein this identifies the, the, the condition, the daily condition of the client every shift. The integrated care pathways, this will uh, give the information on the prognosis of the client. If you can still remember the prognosis that we have discussed in pathophysiology. So this will give us a direction on what would be the, the status of the client and how the client may respond to this specific suggestion of, of treatment regimen. So that is integrated care pathway. Uh, integrated care pathway could be also discharge planning from the time of admission until to until in the, 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 in the direction of the client to be discharged. So that's why 
uh, in, even in clinical decision uh, support system, in clinical decision support system or CDSS, uh, most of the healthcare teams can access the information of the client. So if you will notice, we have security tools, security tools, uh, kasi the, the client may not access all the information that the professional health uh, practitioners can access. But uh, there is some information also of the consumers that are that cannot be accessed by the health professionals because it is within the, the premise of the confidentiality of the client. So those, those are the concepts. So the other one is let us now focus on the patient work framework. For patient work framework, these are more on educational tools, consumer health informatics application. So that's why, for example, uh, personal health record, if the client wish to, to access for the uh, for the her records on the uh, previous hospitalization the person may not anymore uh, proceed physically to the hospital but may just only request for access and the hospital may give you password monitoring system is for example uh, there could be analytics of your blood sugar daily blood sugar level so, and if the services are, are rendered by the hospital, they could give you an access on the monitoring when it comes to the progress or rather the analytics on the blood sugar level. While the personal health mobile applications is the access wherein if, it will, if the doctor will uh, emphasize on the monitoring of weight, so the client can identify in the chart of the access of the hospital, if the, if the client can, can already conclude without even the advice of the, the doctors that he can conclude based from the result of weight, if it is uh, within the normal or the ideal body weight based from the body mass index. So these are, these are, these are the common standard uh, document and communication architecture, but of different access. The professional health information system are for the professionals. Uh, professionals meaning those who are attending the client and for consumer health informatics is focused on the health information that the client may need if in case the client is discharged in case that the client is is is, is still hospitalized he, he may access all this portal uh, menus for him to satisfy with the information that's why uh, with consumer health information or informatics this is more, this is focused on health promotion, this is prevention, self-management, and patient-centered care because the client may, may support decision through the provided information and can be accessed through the technological portal. And actually, this, this could lead also on the, the client's uh, satisfaction when it comes to the health information, how the treatment, how the treatment is being done, and it, if the client will be subject for procedure, what could be the preparation? So it will really increase the level of independence of, of our client who is our consumer. So I know that this, these terms are not new to you because telemedicine, telehealth, and telemonitoring. If we say telemedicine, when uh, these are, these are the, the, the delivery of services on a remote, the telehealth naman, is ang telehealth is uh, the the client can access uh, can access educational information for self care self care management yeah so for example if you if, if in the portal of the hospital there's a menu there and may, you have uh, you are given with the password and the client can access to the information needed uh, for your decision making, then that entails telehealth. Ang telemedicine naman, the difference with the telemedicine, you are already uh, interacting. Yan, you're already interacting with the services. Example, uh, you wish to, to verify related to the billing statement. Uh, billing statement of that hospital in relation to, yan, in relation to the hospital services. That could be telemedicine. So another telemedicine uh, information is, for example, e-prescription, yung electronic prescription na before uh, there's a need to write in the prescription pad and have it retrieved from the, from the clinics of the doctors. And after the consultation, uh, you buy it, you buy the, the medications or the, the, the medicines in the uh, pharmacy, but uh, before they are not acknowledging it. But now, because of the technology, they, are even, they even acknowledge the the, the photo or the screenshot of the, the e-prescription. 
when it comes to telemonitoring, even, even you're interacting with the, the patient is interacting with the doctors to a remote or using the, the platform. So it is just the same as teleconsultation. Okay. So for example, the doctor wish to wish to have uh, any health updates about the condition of the client. So they will just use a platform to have a an interaction. Even in your mobile phones, in your messenger, you, they could have oh, a video call. So that is already telemonitoring. Okay. Now, with the features of consumer health informatics, uh, you can access information through health education website, hospital, uh, hospital, or even in the uh, Department of Health. Web health forum, for example, there could be you can create a forum of those who may have diabetes, and you can share experiences and best practices on the control of diabetes. Patient portal, this is uh, uh, the patient's access on the uh, basic information that he may have on the services, on the health education. Fitness tracker application is an example by which yun nga na mention ko on the the reference if. Uh, it's it's it if, if your, your vital signs has within uh, the normal reference. So these are example of consumer health informatics. Let us now proceed on educational informatics. When it comes to when it comes to the educational informatics, this is referring to uh, educational informatics. This is referring on the learning teaching information science, information and communication uh, technologies. So this is similar with on how the higher education institution and schools still facilitate the learning and teaching and the use of the information technology. So just like in our experience in, in, in MCU, we do have our uh, platforms, the MCU BLE, and we have the Centralino Pit Stop, which, which is used to facilitate the access for the learning materials, the access for link for web sources, and the access link for the how you can interact with your professors. So how how is it how, how is it happening? It is remote. You are in your own homes. I'm teaching in my own home. Then work at uh, work from home, but we could still facilitate learning as well. So these are the focus of the educational informatics. Now. Let us, uh, the educational informatics is on how the person can access learning resources. And the consumers that we're talking here are the students or our stakeholders. Let us now proceed with the number four, public health informatics. In public health informatics, uh, our consideration is basically population. So we have consumer health informatics, is health information. Uh, for the clinical informatics, is more on individuals, while on public health informatics, we do have our population or, or a large group. So the scope of public health informatics are the following. So if you will notice, we have a, a, a level here from conceptualization, design, development, implementation, evaluation, maintenance. These are, these are already, I know, these are already the, the, the system or the, pro the procedure, the processes that are already uh, practiced even without the use of the technology. But with, with this, uh, with this uh, processes uh, or, or steps, we, uh, it, when, when it involves or in the embed the informatics, it, it, it increases the convenience or the time, the real time updating whenever you will use a platform or uh, a technological platform or, or access uh, through web sources of the basic information. So example, so what are those examples of health information systems that, that, that the public health are using? This is reporting. So just like in COVID-19, right? how the Department of Health generate information. So if you will notice before they, before the diagnostic and hospitals can offer the, the testing, yeah, the testing for COVID-19 for RT-PCR, they need to be accredited by the hospital because they, they are mandated to, to send reports to the hospital, mga confirmatory results, because this will be processed for updating in the social media. So outbreak management, so diba, through the analytics, the Department of Health, through the gathered information can easily identify if we are already on surge of the cases. Cancer registries, 
uh, we can already identify the uh, that in the national population uh, how many Filipinos are, are are the leading cause of of cancer here in the Philippines. So we can identify that risk factor surveillance for risk factor surveillance. Because if we say surveillance, you you will ano you will monitor. So if we say if we say surveil surveillance or what we call a risk factor, for example, if there is an increasing in the number of COVID nineteen cases, the surveillance will will be ano the surveillance will be done to identify how it started. So that's why one of well, one of the measures here is contact tracing. And even in the contact tracing, uh, we are even instructed to ano eh, we are even instructed to uh, what you call this. Uh, register in safe uh, uh, .ph, uh, safe .ph, simply because this is really relevant when it comes to contact tracing. So for newborn screening, uh, it could facilitate the use of technology to identify if the 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 newborn may have uh, future problems when it comes to the health. So these are these are the use or uh, these are the the health information systems. That are already present in the in 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 our in our communities in our health facilities, but it can access now the at the convenience of the the client. So that's why from the time that if there is disease reporting and outbreak, it will conceptualize, it will design, it will design program, it will develop guidelines. Then once the guidelines is implemented, uh, implemented in the community, and it will evaluate. And if, if it is successful on the uh, prevention of disease, then it will serve as maintenance or this will be used as a standard. So that's why this is the scope of public health. That's why uh, most of the public health are on focus with community health information because this may involve policymakers, healthcare workers who are, uh, who are uh, involved in the initiatives of the government. So in the US, we have the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention we have also World Health Organization as the main for uh, main ano, source of information. So why CDC is considered as as uh, the source of focus for public health informatics? Because we have the public health information network. So any public health information network, uh, they could access, they can have access on, for example, the Philippines, barangay level, local government units, provincial, then national level. That's the network that they could facilitate when it comes to the, the information. When it comes to information exchange service, this is within the, the uh, uh, professional or the health practitioners wherein they can they can they can uh, have interaction or exchange of information to various agencies such as DOH. So see health worker reporting to DOH information exchange service. Yon. But if the information goes on the different level from barangay, municipal, provincial, national level, that's the what we call public information network. When we talk about biosurveillance program, ito yung tinatawag nating vital statistics. Uh, we are aware pag vital statistics, body. Uh, body uh, measurement. It's not. But vital statistics, these are more, fo more focused on the yung, uh, rate by population group. Example, if you've heard about morbidity rate, mortality rate, maternal deaths, neonatal deaths, neonatal morbidity, maternal morbidity. So this, this are, these are the, the, the example on how it will retrieve information and data using vital statistics. And in this way, this is an atypical situation on how public health informatics are being used. Example, uh, meron tayong tinatawag na epidemiological tools. So yung mga epidemiolog epidemiological tools, pag sinabi natin epidemiology, uh, they're the ones responsible for gathering of information. Sila rin yung nag uh, nag nagsasabi if, if the situation is already outbreak. So that's why very... Uh, immerse sila when it comes to the gathering of information example if if for example the the client or the the department or the city health office wish to know uh uh yung yung mga cases of uh, asthma in the community through the use of the electronic disease surveillance na they could just search in the in their mobile phones and have it uh have their response it will centralize the information to the city health office so they may now they may know in just in just uh, one hour in just minutes 
they could uh, already have consolidated without an interview and house to house so we have the electronic medical record lalo na yan with with the health center for example they wish to access how many how many uh, clients have visited the health centers for for today so all the health centers have the centralized system on the city health office and it will already enter on a real time the the, the number of uh, clients who have visited the the ano the the health centers so etong electronic lab information management eto yung uh, yung concept that has been introduced by the DOH na yung reporting all accredited uh, laboratories will have the mandate to report the to the central office so the other one could be mobile based system uh, alam nyo po ba na that uh, a mother a pregnant mother uh, can can already identify if she is high risk or not through the mobile based system so at least once once the the city health office will ask oh how many high risk pregnancies do we have now in the population so it will just have a one one reply in the mobile based system then it will enter all the data and information rather to the epidemiology center so last but not the least we have the research in nursing uh, informatics so we all know that uh, when it comes to research it's always systematic we always take into consideration that we we must identify the problem know the data needed and how the information will be gathered and analyzed as well so this is a very important factor because uh, research in nursing at compasses pa rin yung healthcare system uh, if you are aware of the Research Institute for Tropical Medicine or the RITM. RITM is considered as a research center. That's why uh, RITM are, are the center for research nung nag, uh, increase yung surge natin for COVID-19 kasi their, their facilities are, are really complete when it comes to the use of the technology. And, and even, even the government May, may set a priority of the agenda of what to cover and what to attend to. Yeah, every time that 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 there's an issue uh, that arises in, in 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 24 hours, the the our Department of Health will coordinate already in the RITM on what could be the preventive measures we could do as based from their researches. So, yung yung DOH personnel may not proceed to the RITM. So they could just access the, the data and they could uh, use it as a reference for policy or guidelines. So that's why yung mga clinical trials, ayan, lalo ngayon sa vaccination program, yung vaccination program, they could already identify yung mga reports ng, uh, reports ng adverse effect. If you can still remember in pharmacology, yung pharmacovigilance, yung report of adverse uh, effects. So yeah, they could, they could already consolidate those reports from the co community people. And I think that ends up our topic for today. Okay? So I'll 